Today we'll read The Keeper of Wild Words, written by Brooke Smith and illustrated by Madeline Kloepper. At the end of a long cinder lane, surrounded by meadows and pine trees that wrapped around and back again. Brooke ran up to her grandmother's door, swung it open, and she belonged. Mimi, I am here. Brooke called her grandmother Mimi. She wasn't just a grandmother, she was a grand friend. Mimi had been waiting. She'd been sitting at her desk all day, distracted by a hummingbird, a wasp's nest, a red-tailed hawk hovering overhead. Mimi was a writer. She wove words into everything that mattered. Brooke was so excited to be vis visiting, she needed Mimi's help. Tomorrow was the first day of school and Brooke had nothing for show and tell. Her summer had been wonderful, but she didn't have one special thing to share that her friends would always remember. But today, Mimi needed Brooke's help too. She had something important to ask her. I'm afraid some of my favorite words are disappearing. Some of the wild words that I've known and loved my whole life. How do words disappear? Brooke wondered. Words disappear if we don't share them when we talk, if we don't write them in our stories, if we don't read them in our books. If we don't use words, they can be forgotten. And if they're forgotten, they disappear. I need someone to keep them safe, she continued, to help remember, I need you to be my keeper, the keeper of wild words. Can I wear a crown? Brooke asked. No, Mimi laughed. The keeper doesn't need a crown. She just needs to keep her eyes wide open and be ready to see hear and feel all the wild words. That way she'll always remember them. Look, some wild words. Acorn, apricot, beaver, blackberry, buttercup, dandelion, doe, drake, fern, lavender, minnow, mint, monarch, poppy, porcupine, starling, violet, willow, wren. From sun up to sundown, we'll walk and run and walk again, sit and wait, listen and touch until we find every word on the list, said Mimi. Or every word on the list finds us. I'm ready, said Brooke. And they were off. And sure enough, as soon as they stepped into the morning, wild words were waiting. A wren sang a good morning song. A little brown bird with a voice like an angel 
sitting up high, looking down, just waiting to say hello to the world. Hello. Bunches of violets spread underfoot. Sweet perfume filled the air, almost making Brooke dizzy. Their purple faces smiled, inviting the day to begin. Poppies in the corner of the yard suddenly popped open, paper petals reaching to the sun. And bushes feel, filled with blackberries, just like the ones Brooke had eaten for breakfast. Hundreds still waiting to be picked and enjoyed for dessert. Do wild words dance like this every morning? Along the way, Brooke picked up an acorn that fell from a mighty oak, big towering oak tree, little nut with a brown, with a tiny brown hat, smooth round shell. She put it in her pocket to remember. Up ahead they saw light reflected in a round mirror of water. The pond. When Brooke scooped up a handful of water, silver minnows swam circles in her palm, now a pool. Whoever knew she could hold the wild. Then splash, a beaver jumped in, and then under he went, swimming towards his den, climbing up on the other side of the pond, and then disappearing from view. It's sure busy around here, Brooke said. Always, Mimi answered. Bushels of mint surrounded the pond. Mimi picked stems and rubbed the leaves in her fingers. Brooke picked a leaf and put it in her mouth. Fresh, sweet, tangy. From the ground, from the earth, she could taste the wild. Then one last visitor waddled by, green velvet head, bright yellow beak, Mr. Drake, Papa Duck running, quack, run, lift off, wings out, there he goes. Where next? The meadow. Just follow the trail. Cut deep in the tall grass. Brooke ran ahead. So free, so free. A butterfly, a monarch, diving in the breeze. Now you are just like me. Bright buttercups welcomed them, yellow petals glistening in the sun, a wild carpet of light and beauty. Quick, make a wish, holding out a dandelion, fairy dust sitting on a stem. Blow on it, the seeds will fly your tiny wishes into the air. At the top of the meadow stood an old willow tree. The shade of the willow was like a dear friend. Mimi had known this tree forever. What a perfect place to have lunch, Mimi said. She took out, she took out small sandwiches and apricots picked from her yard round fuzzy fruit sweet as could be the juice dripping with every bite rows of lavenders lined the field below filling the air with magic perfume
Just then, overhead, Brooke could not believe her eyes. There's a bird cloud flying above us. Oh my, Mimi said. The starlings are back. Such an amazing wonder. Thousands of birds swooped, darted, and turned somehow always staying connected. Then they floated away as mysteriously as they came. Finally, they wandered over to the dense, dark woods. Brooke had always been a little afraid of the forest, but now part of her was wild and she couldn't wait. A light rain started to fall, sudden summer shower. The rain made the smells of the forest come alive and all the plants glisten. The ferns, ferns with their with magnificent their leaves, their magnificent green feathered leaves, curled up and then spread out like a fan for everyone to notice. What else do you see? Mimi asked. Brooke looked across the forest floor and sure enough, nestled in the needles was a doe, a deer curled up like the fern, fast asleep in the shadows. walk slowly by. We'll let her be. In the woods, things appear around corners tucked deep. Ahead, they heard a rustling. Stop, Mimi said. Walk back slowly towards me. Right then, a porcupine popped out and ran up a tree. Porcupines, if they're sca scared, what will let their quills fly. Surprises abound in the wild. Mimi had one other surprise. You know my favorite wild word is not on the list, she said. It's standing right in front of me. A gurgling sound was coming from a clearing, light flickering on a glassy surface. It was a small stream, a brook dancing, sparkling, singing. It knew exactly where it was going. Joyful thread of water cutting through the trees. The last wild word is you, Mimi said. You were named after this tiny stream that your mother always cherished. One could only imagine such a perfect name for the keeper of wild words. Mimi, I never told you what I needed help with, said Brooke. What is it? Mimi said. I need something special for show and tell tomorrow. And now I have it. The night sky would soon be painted, stars gleaming, gleaming overhead, a beautiful wild curtain closing on the day. Mimi's wild words were safe. They were shared and remember, understood, deeply loved. When the wild wraps around you, it stays forever in your heart. Thank you kindly for listening to the book, The Keeper of the Wild Words, with me.